Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jalisa, you're watching No Country for Old Trends, and we're gonna go quickly into this video. Uh, pay no attention to the construction if you do hear it in the video. It seems like they always start when I'm about to film, but the whole time that I'm getting ready, completely quiet, no noise. So what's going on is, you remember the last video, the chit chat get ready with me, where I said I was going to be filming this video right here? The nine must have apps to upgrade your graphics. Yeah, that <laughs> chit chat get ready with me. Um, I lost all the footage from that video because I decided to use this app called Every Chord. And the YouTubers are recommending this app. Don't use it. If you're a YouTuber and you want to screen record your phone, just go ahead and use QuickTime Real Player because I don't have the time to be losing footage and it took me two hours to make that video to make sure that it was all good for you guys so now i don't even have any type of footage to work with i have to start all over hence the new outfit new makeup everything my hair probably doesn't look the same if you didn't know i guess i'm kind of a graphics maven if you want to call me that people usually like to see what i create on instagram and on the blog so i'm going to be sharing how you can make those creations yourself and if you aren't already, follow me on Instagram. It's at No Country for Old Trends. The video is definitely going to be over here. <laughs> the blog post version of this is down below, but I decided to do a video just in case you're more of a reader, writer than you are auditory visual learner. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to stop rambling and we're just going to go ahead and get into this video. It might be a long one, so let's get started. Grab a snack. Let's go. I'm just going to start on my cell phone since. It's just more convenient for me to start that way. And I want to tell you that the apps that I use to edit photos, make cool graphics, are on my screen and in this hidden folder, photography folder. I use Facetune, ViscoCam, Unum, PixArt, and two other apps that are hidden in here, which are Studio and ColourPop, which are used very rarely, but I wanted to present it to you just in case you might want to use it for your own graphics. So to start off with Facetune, do I have a photo already here? Oh, so I have a photo already here. Um, what I like to use is sometimes if I take a selfie on the iPhone, I will flip it because I feel like it looks ugly. I use the whiten tool for teeth or for white objects in the, um, in the photo. I'll use the smooth tool, the details. Details is really to bring out like, if you want to bring out your eyes or like your hair curls, um, what else? Reshape would be to like change it if you were like, if your posture wasn't right, you could, you could reshape, change that up. Refine is to do little bitty touches and resize are to do the huge super touches. So like when you see those Instagram models with the big old butts and stuff, <laughs> they could be using Facetune. What Facetune is, is just really a Photoshop app, but a user-friendly Photoshop, I feel. And it comes with filters, even though I don't use that. I always, always brighten my photo. And sometimes if 50 is too bright, I'll bring it down. But anyway, I'm going to be giving like an in-depth tutorial of Facetune. I'm sure you've heard of it before. If you're a social media user, you know what Facetune is. So we don't really need to go into it in this video. And I'll bring it up again in another video. As for another photo editing app, Visco Cam, you've probably heard of this too. I used this in the very beginning of my Instagram days before I even started my blog. It was just an app that came with really cool filters. You can buy more filters if you wanted to. And I liked this app because I used to use filters, but now I just like to stick to the actual color of my photos. So I don't even feel the need to use this so much anymore. The filters that I liked to use back when I started were I like the A sometimes to give like a dark, cool feel. I like the C's, which was supposed to be to increase the vibrancy, and it does put a little cool filter on it again. Like a cool, when I mean cool, I mean cool toned. And I did like S1, S2. I kind of pick, S1 is definitely vintage, and S2 is more so contrast, I feel, is a higher contrast. I kind of used to pick filters that stuck really close to the real life anyways. I guess I was never really a filter type of person. You can pick, I mean, P4, it's up to you. But the point of using filters is to give your photos a more cohesive look 
and it helps you plan your Instagram properly because you won't have contrasting colors all around. It's just an easier plan for your Instagram. Really cool thing that about Visco Cam was before they decided to make all these damn changes, it used to look like an Instagram grid so you could really plan out your feed and make it look really special. Now it doesn't look like that anymore. I guess they, they gave back the effect of squares, but it no longer looks like an Instagram grid. So most people don't bother to use Visco Cam to plan their Instagram. And I'm going to be sharing the next app with you to plan your Instagram, which was Uno. Uh, I'm still working on that top feed and this photo is the photo that I have to post next. I should definitely like post that within the hour <laughs> right after I finish filming this video. This is what I use to plan my Instagram feed and curate and make it all look pretty. I know this app really isn't like a graphic kind of app. It's not like it's, you do have filters on it. It has filters that you can use, right? But I don't think anybody really uses the filters we just use it to plan our Instagram feed it usually comes with 18 free squares and then you can upgrade your plan if you want more squares but I can show you a trick around if you fill up all your 18 I can show you another way to plan your Instagram feed the next app that I'd like to mention is Pixar so it's this rainbow looking kind of filter that's close it looks kind of like the Instagram filter you click on Pixar make awesome pictures they're right. They're completely right. Pixar is Pixar is one of those apps that I've had since the beginning of Instagram as well. Not um, it's an app I just I put it down, but I'm starting to pick it back up again, and it's for a good reason. It's like if we want to call Facetune like the Photoshop editor, it's like the editor of bodies, most like like more likely. I consider both Facetune and Pixar to be similar to Photoshop, but different skills. Facetune I would use more for like sucking in a tummy or adding the details into my eyes or fixing a pimple or something. What Pixar is great at is creating graphics, like creating cool like comic book effects, stuff like that. So you're about to see when I just clicked because it's easier for me to just show it than explain it. The tools that I love to use on Pixar are the actual tools but in here magic and effects is full of um filters so if you wanted filters again that's another place where you can get filters the off-grid effect i think is really cool because you can change the size of the squares you can change the hue of the photo this dissolve changes how many squares you have and fade yeah is like the fade is the what do you call that Hmm. Brain fart, whatever. You can have color gradients, which are cool. You can change the colors of each thing. Let me just move that out of the way so you guys can see. Easy. Magic is the real, the real magic happens. All of these little filters, images here at the bottom, are filters that can take the place of your photo, or filters that you can put on top of your photo basically. It's always been a dream of mine to have somebody to draw me, like be so inspired by a picture of me that they feel like they want to draw me. And if nobody's going to draw me, then I'm going to draw myself. So we're going to see how, what I mean right now. When you click on pop sketch, for example, it applies the filter to whatever the photo is, and you can always fade the effect so you can make it look more realistic or unrealistic. And you can change, usually with these filters, they come with, you see how the original photo has pink and green and purple and red, and the effect has yellow, blue, hardly any pink. You can change it back to the colors of the photo or keep the colors of the effect. So the colors of the photo, the colors of the effect. Each filter takes about maybe 10 to 15 seconds to actually produce. But once you click one effect before, it won't take a long time to load. So if I press pop sketch right now, it's ready to go. And if I pet, press rainbow right now, it's ready to go. But if I press any other, then it'll, you'll have to do the little loading time. So the filters that I like to use the most are rainbow, pow, and neopop. 
and they add new filter they add new magic effects very frequently so i love that it just gives you a cool feel like if you really want to get into changing your graphics around changing the picture completely and we can talk more about that in an upcoming video because i'm going to be shooting three videos i guess in total this one that you're watching right now another one that teaches you how to do simple edits to your instagram photos and another video that teaches you how to do like wild edits to your photos so here we go that's the effect i love the little comic book pop little bubbles that it has there i love the color scheme that it chooses can make it as less more realistic if you want and again this photo comes with like these pink well yeah I guess you call it pink blue oranges you can change it back to the colors of the photo so Neopop is loaded and again they Neopop tools they added this really cool new effect and I don't think any other place or I don't think any other app has it so I just want to show you really quick you can basically draw on the image. So you move your hand across the image and you make this line. Let's do it again. And it creates like this triangle dispersion. That's what they call it, dispersion. And you can change the stretch. You can change the size of the triangles, the direction. You can fade the triangles. I just think that effect's really cool. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. But I think it's something that has potential. The last two apps that I want to show you are the ones that are hidden in the secret folder. And it's apps that I kind of, one app I definitely never used at all, which is ColourPop, but I want to present it to you. And the app at the studio, I used it a little bit in the beginning. It's good for like a quick flyer purpose. Like if you want to say quickly that you're going on Instagram live in like 30 minutes, you can create a cool flyer very quickly. You can put writing on it, hate is going hate. You can change the colors of the writing, how big the writing is. Um, and all of it counts as like, oops, all of it counts as these layers. So here's a layer one, layer two. Layers is definitely reminiscent of like Photoshop talk. So it is one of those apps, but this is very easy to use. And I feel like I used the wrong photo because it will be better on a photo that's not like of a person. But like, say you have a picture of leaves. I'm going to show you an example of what you can create across the screen. But like, say you have a picture of palm trees. You just want to use that really quickly. Yeah, I just think Studio is really cool for like, there's, of course, there's filters. You can add text to your photos. It comes with all these different fonts. And the last app that I wanted to show you is I've been noticing a trend with some style bloggers that they're starting to grayscale the rest of the photo and keep themselves as the only person in color. And again, that's another way to maintain cohesiveness on your Instagram. If you want to create a beautiful feed, then everything else can be gray and then you would just be the only person standing out. And that way the photos don't clash with whatever photos next to it. So ColourPop is an app that lets you do that quick and easy. This is open from the last time I shot this video and I lost all the damn footage. So I just wanted to show you an example. I did not use ColourPop to make this gray body that you see right here. This was made on Photoshop. But it's a way that you can create a gray effect. So you have this color, this gray tool, and the recolor tool you have to pay for. I think it might be a dollar to pay for it, but I don't use this app at all. I like that it comes with a little preview square up there at the top so you can see what you're doing oh and i was actually graying the photo so as you can see you can gray whatever element of the photo that you want and if you want to undo something you just put the color back in the one thing i don't like i think i don't know there's two things i don't like about this app there's a bunch of ads like there are ads on pixart and are there ads on any other app no just pixart pixart and colorbot both have um, ads. ColourPop's ads are a little bit annoying because it's hard to like, really get out of them. And the next thing that I don't like about ColourPop is that when you save the photo, like say I press next, do you see this little watermark that says made with... It, the watermark here in the corner is like a revolving square. That's going to say made with ColourPop and that's not what we want at all. So my suggestion 
what I would tell you to do is see ads so oh my god please please if you know any other app that's better to do that that's more useful or better at doing this gray feature you can leave it in the comment section for other people to know because I don't use this filter or these features at all so I just found this app really quickly help your friend out below I would try to make the photo as big as possible then screenshot the photo and what I would do is I would go into my photos and then get rid of all the outside stuff and that way you've gotten around the watermark like crop it that's good enough and then you'll have a photo without any of these problems for the sake of this video we're going to move on to the Pinterest app and we're just gonna look at my phone but I usually like to use the Pinterest like website I think the app the mobile app and the website are pretty much the same thing I just think you would not expect to see Pinterest on this list and the reason or the way that I use Pinterest is that I search you can see it right there 90s wallpaper but what I would do is I would type in 90s wallpaper 80s wallpaper um, retro wallpaper and then you'll get these cool graphics that you can put behind your photos like this one's pretty cool and it also gives me inspiration to make new photos so this is another way that you can get inspiration as a graphic designer to change your Instagram around I save the photo and then I put them onto Photoshop or whatever I use yeah it's most of the time it's Photoshop I start manipulating it and everything on Photoshop so Pinterest I just showed you on my phone really quickly but obviously there is an a website that you can go to as well and for the next two I'm just going to go on to my computer because I don't like using the mobile apps for these features so of course what would this be if I didn't mention Photoshop as one of the tools to upgrade your graphics it's obvious that most editors online magazines um, models all the images that you see online and on your TV are most likely photoshopped we all know this and you've heard of Photoshop before and you're probably intimidated by the price and the technology I get it what I like to do is think of Photoshop as a Microsoft paint and don't get intimidated by it because there's tons of tutorials on Google and YouTube teaching you how to do pretty much everything I learned how to use Photoshop when I had my own online business uh, we can save that story for another day but I've learned more now that I'm blogging and I've gotten back into the swing of things and I just really love Photoshop to do a lot of advanced editing before I forget to mention there's two options for the price of Photoshop you can torrent it or you can use a free website called Pixlr Pixlr is an online photo editor similar to Photoshop and all you do is type in pixlr.com you launch the web app you can create a new image or open an image from a computer you can make it transparent which will give you like an empty grid and you'll see similar tools to the Photoshop tools I don't think they have all of them and I don't think the quality of editing is that much different so I did use pixlr for a while before I told my boyfriend to just go ahead and torrent Photoshop for me it's just an easy quick way to use Photoshop without having to spend the money or having to download it illegally the last app I want to talk about is Canva you know Canva if you're a blogger or a youtuber most likely you know Canva people use Canva to make thumbnails it comes with like a YouTube thumbnail and a YouTube channel art which is your banner this is the folder where I usually keep all my YouTube thumbnails holds up to 30 thumbnails basically or 30 images so I'm pretty much done I filled out this whole um, sheet or project if you want to call it that but it comes with these layouts pre-made layouts and some are free and some you would have to pay for so you can use all of these to just create a really cool YouTube banner you probably heard of it what I used to do for my old thumbnails this is just a rectangle and I used to put the same font on every single thing to have some um, branding I guess to have the same look every time I put a video up let me just add a new page an empty page so the page will be white when you press here any photo upload photo that you upload to it automatically fits the size whereas if you didn't put a grid 
any photo you put would just stay there. So you always want to try to put a grid so that the photo takes up the whole space. Okay. Now they've added all these cool texts. I love these texts. So what I've decided to use, before they didn't have this many. They did not. Now they have like birthdays, engagements, birth of a new baby, parties, congratulations, which is the same thing as graduations. <laughs> but yeah, they have all these cool text and I love like the pattern. It takes the guessing work out for you. Now you can design a nice poster and you won't have to do a lot of the thinking. The last thing that I want to mention about Canva is when I was planning out my Jamaica feed, I had so many pictures that I wanted to use and I wanted to make sure that the feed looked really pretty and curated still. So all I did was picked out a grid. If you go to elements again, um, you go to grids, there is a three by three. 3x3 three three there, you put the grid, you can change the spacing in between the grid, like smaller or smaller. You want to make it look as close to Instagram as possible. So the Instagram grid has like this little bit of space in it. And you can arrange your photos this way. The only thing, the convenience about Unum was that you can easily move, swap two pictures and move them to different places. Whereas here, you have to manually put the photo and you can't move that photo to one right. You see what happens when if I try to move that photo into this slot, it moves the entire thing. So it is a longer, more annoying process than Una, but if you really need to get something done, you just take the time and plan it out. Woo! So that was a very long-winded video. Hopefully I was able to cut it down and make it short enough. I mean, I was going through over nine apps, so I can understand if the video is a bit longer than others, but hopefully you appreciated actually seeing it more, than, more so than reading it. Again, you can check the description box for the blog post if you need any further information. Feel free to leave a comment in the comment section if you have any questions or if you really want to see me go into depth about any particular app. There will be two more videos coming up after this. One is going to be about simple editing to your Instagram photos, and the other is going to be about wild graphic designing to your Instagram photos. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up if you like this video, and thumbs up if you want more content like this one. Let me know in the comments section that you want more tech talk. I said tech talk like I'm Shameless Maya. If you want more techie videos. We're not taking her turn from her. <laughs> and that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.